Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Grammy Game Plays Disco Elysium. As always, I'm Chucks. And this is Browbeat, joined by Kiva the Cat. Oh, in the have... room, looking very disinterested. You have a cat today in your lap. Not in my lap, but she's decided to grace us with her presence, napping in the office, looking distinctly, deliberately uninterested. You know, people do that. They just show up and go, oh, no, no, I don't care. But they're definitely within her shot, judging you the whole time. The whole it's like... Uh, we click, whole... click on a choice option. She goes, that's not what I would have done. I'm sorry, were you watching? No, I'm a cat. I don't care. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's go. Let's load. Let's do this. Got yeah. excited. Get, get the body out of the tree, he said. Real quick. Yep. Super easy. Yeah, it's always easy, right? Let, let Just let the body sit the floor? <laughs> or not. <laughs> as, as happens a lot with our detective, many things are attempted or begun, and then you put them down and walk away. What's this? I never saw that. Oh. Well, you weren't looking for it. <clears throat> hmm. Right as we start, I have, to, I have a coughing fit. All right, let's... Uh, what do we got down here? What do we got? What do we got? Oh, I can level up. The, the amount of restraint that I have to show in most situations. Like, in key ones, I'll pop up. But I see something you don't see, and I have to not say it. Because if you find it, you find it. If you don't, you don't. Hmm... I got it. Let's see your pain threshold. What are we? What are we doing? Well, it depends. Are you looking to hear from certain personalities? Notice things. I feel that we should go with. Oh, we're going. We're going with. Uh... Hmm. <laughs> we'll talk through your thoughts here, Mister Chucks. I, I'm trying to think about. So what I'm thinking about right now is how I've played this game so far and how I've done it. Um, not really asserting myself. I'm not like beating my chest saying, hey, I'm the law. I haven't really had to get physical with anybody yet. So I'm thinking empathy. Understand others. Work your uh, mirror neurons. I but, think that does reflect on what you've been doing considering you've been going for as few crazy options or out there dialogue as possible only occasionally leading into something because you're you're reading people you're being careful about it yeah, i'm gonna so i would support that notion yeah that's what i was thinking like okay except changes close what do we got what do we got what do we got uh we got a kid whipping rocks on a corpse we got that too yeah what is this instant photo of tattoos okay lieutenant kichuragi snapped this photo of the hangman's tattoos displays the Intricate web of blue lines stretching across his torso. You have to admit, it looks quite cool. If you want to, depending on what time of day it is, you can interact with the photo, which gives you further dialogue. Hmm. You have a photo of the hangman's tattoos. Maybe someone can... Oh. Who what? can decipher them? Who can tell you more about this man? Ah, I didn't mean to quit that. It's okay. Just hit internalize again. While they're processing, you can unslot them freely. <clears throat> oh. Once they're ingrained, that's when it costs you skill points to remove them. Ah, I gotcha, gotcha. It is 2 p.m. on a Monday. That was weird. Yeah, 2 p.m. on a Monday. I think I know who can help us out with this. We're going go to go to... race racist lorry driver. All right. <laughs> yeah, if only. Let's go talk to... <laughs> what is it, Motorhead? Measurehead. Measurehead. To be fair... I had not made that association in my mind that you made, but I like how you're thinking. Who could tell me about that tattoos? Hey, uh, you... I hope there's a contingency for this. I hope they actually have an option. Your race descent has only worsened since I last saw you. You have really let mm. yourself go. At this time, no. Well, I don't think he's going to talk to you about that. Harbor. We need help with the tree situation. There must be another way. Oh, so we might be able to go to the Whirling Rags. Get on the roof. Hmm. I'm going to tell you right now. You won't be able to get on the roof in the Whirling Rags at this time. Gotcha. So let's see who... But if you want to visit the Whirling Rags, suppose you could. 
gotta find somebody that can tell us about the tattoos. Maybe the racist lorry driver can tell us about the tattoos. <laughs> Talk to him. There we go. Looking for something odd? Come to tell me to nope. fuck off again? No, we're done for now. God, who can tell us about the tattoos? I'm trying to think. Do I need to equip the photo? No, you don't equip it, but it's something you have in your pocket. Stuck in the rain in a traffic jam, man. What's on your mind? What is that about the strike? It's a new option. Why is that new? It's like, whatever's going on mm. over at the docks. Workers got a blockade set up, making demands. No way in or out. What's the union demanding? Anything else I should know? Hmm. Let's see what the union's demanding. Some pretty wild stuff, I hear. Like a giant new power crane in half the company? Forget what exactly. Good on them, I guess. I've heard talk there's a company rep in town, too. Like, a strike negotiator type. They'd know what's up. Precise demands and so on. Ah, yes. From the Wild Pines. We'll meet her soon enough, I'm sure. What do you think the company wants? Hmm. Let's ask they what that... keep that money flowing in, my man. ka <laughs> Okay. Everyone get paid. Anything yes. else? Yeah, he this thinks. ain't really my area of expertise. I just do my job and get paid. I have things to do and places to be. All of us do. All uh, who? Us lorry drivers. Cam, your nurse. You still hang around here waiting for this mess to end. Most have scurried off somewhere to get drunk or high. Or laid. Not that I blame them, really. Not you? Not my thing. Chasing transient pleasures is a drag these days. I prefer the examined life now. Thinking, reflecting, observing. He glances down the road towards the horizon, a glint of something in his eyes. What's better than chasing transient pleasures? The more transient, the better. When one's ended, you can get on to the next one. You did improve empathy. Let's try. Ease into Ooh. it. Ooh. Don't go too far. This seems like a personal matter. Just the like last time. Yep. Let's go with two. Hey, Tommy, what's... Hey, Tommy, spill the beans. What's troubling you? Man, nothing's troubling me. Just the usual Loreman tropes and hopes. The road and the rhymes. This jam ain't helping either. He looks around. Is that all the beans you got, Tommy? Damn, it really is hard to talk, man to man. We'll have to buff it again, or not. We will. Uh, whew. who do we have that can tell us about this? Damn. Is that your chief concern? Uh, who can tell about the tattoos? Oh yeah, because well, hold on here. Tattoos. And getting the body down. And then... And then you're missing gun. <laughs> and missing gun and the yeah, badge. With many other problems. Well, then my only piece of advice or guidance is you haven't met everyone yet. Huh, really? Yes. There are areas of this town you have not walked to yet. That you can get to. Hmm. And nope. it's not this way. Oh, damn. Because you talked to Silang, and you wouldn't take the uh, the salami, and you've chatted up with the old folks a little bit, yeah. but you got this really curious habit of just leaving things. Yeah, not gonna finish that now. Not, not gonna finish it now. Okay. What is this? What is this? What is this? Lonely cormorant cor surveys the sea, indifferent to approach. What is this? Ooh. I believe a boat shines like the recent, <laughs> like it was recently painted. Ooh, okay. Let's go stare at a wall. Yeah, let's go stare at this wall. See what it does. Oh, hey. This is a wall on the side of an apartment building. Conceptualization. Impossible. Why am I looking at this wall? Okay, we're gonna 
Leave that balloon now. Why? I, uh, I want to try to make it more. Oh, hey, there we go. No, let me uh, let me also present you with this old nugget here. Yeah. Go ahead. Do you remember that stat checks unlock when you raise the stat corresponding to the check? Mm-hmm. So you're probably not gonna come back to. Sneak up on me. Come to slit my throat in my sleep. Go on. I didn't mean to click that. I'm sorry. It's okay. So if you have a low chance of clearing clearing something, mm -hmm. and you probably won't raise that stat again later, you have nothing to lose by attempting. Well, good point. Because then you would have come back with a higher stat possibly if you wanted to improve it, and have a better chance anyway. So you can leave things alone. This detective is really good at going, yeah, whatever, and wandering away. But just, just to offer the perspective, you actually lose nothing unless that stat is capped out. Okay. No, why would you even say that? Are you sleeping right now? I'm sorry for sneaking up on you. Then why are you sneaking up on me like that? It's not a good idea to scare me, pig. <laughs> not a good idea at all. Do you know S? Well, let's go. Let's go try it. You, you've convinced me, sir. I will go try and... And you'll probably fail, but again, Just you can come back wall. later. Nothing to see here. You have no clue. It's just a wall. So many walls all over Martinez. Weather worn, cracked, their paint peeling. Hmm. Let's go this way. Are you wearing your glasses? Yeah. Okay. A garden hose that won't be of use until the snow melts. Let's take a look at this. Chairs and tables eaten by the rain and rot. What is this? Orange bum Orange hat. Bum hat. Let's. Ah, oh, what? Okay, there we go. Look on it. Well, you just have to put it on. An orange beanie with a couple of big ass holes on the side. It looks like it might have been used as a mask during an armed robbery. Plus one reaction speed, feeling twitchy. Minus one rhetoric, bum brain. What is yet yeah, neither one? Rhetoric is one, so yeah, it's not a big. So this got turned into two. And this was two, and I minus one. Oh well. We're, we're rocking the bum hat for now. The bum hat. At least it's not the Casbah. Yes. These barrels are half full of rainwater. Just closed door. But look, but you look suspiciously at it. Look, can we get up there? There is a way to get up there. Hmm. But not this way. I'm going to assume it's going to be through there. There must be another way into the building. Hmm. Or you wander away. Yeah. Come back to that door. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw you this bone. Yeah. You're gonna have a bad time otherwise. Can't get involved in this. There's a man smoking up there. Yeah, I saw that. You see. Oh, you can talk to him from down here. A balcony, nursing a cigarette. His eyes have been following you for a while. Not looking for any trouble, officer. He says in a quiet voice. Despite the cold, his shirt hangs unbuttoned on his frame. Why are you whispering? It sounds like you're already in trouble. No trouble for me. I just want to know what's going on here. Too late, young man. Trouble's found you. I'll come back to this later. Well, let's go with one, because that's what it seems to me. There's no trouble. I'm just speaking in a lowered voice. He says, so. so the I don't want to be seen talking to the gendarmerie, if that's okay. I just want to finish my cigarette. It's the god of cigarettes and youth. Ask him if he's got anything to spare. <laughs> Don't let him go. This could be your witness. The balcony has a great view of the whole thing. Hold on. Can I at least have a cigarette? Actually, the gendarmerie really needs to talk to you. No problem. We'll talk more next time. That's your option right there. 
No, because he may have something. That's what I was thinking the whole time. Is it really that important? He asks you, adjusting his shirt. Like a nervous cat, he keeps stealing looks at the neighboring windows. All right, but make it quick. Once I finish this cigarette, I have to run. Can you tell me your name? Looks like you've got a good view of the Whirling's back backyard. Can you tell me anything about the hanging? All right, we'll talk later. Yeah, we're going to. I'd even go so far as to say that the view is a little <clears throat> too good, my dear gendarme. Do you have an estimate of when the body will be taken away? About that. We will remove the body as soon as possible. Now tell us, where were you last Sunday? Oh. You already asked me that, didn't you? Did I? Did you look at him? I'm pretty sure I didn't. No, not you. Some more muscular type. Hmm. And when did you speak to this more muscular gentleman? The lieutenant takes out his little blue notebook and writes something down. Last week? I don't know. Look. He looks around the courtyard again. Snow blankets the old patio chairs and dead house plants, and all the neighboring windows are black. You didn't answer the question. What were you doing last Sunday? I had a friend over. What kind of friend? It was my Sunday friend. Booty call! A Sunday friend? How intriguing. Makes sense. Friends are nice on Sunday. You don't have to work. You can just spend time with pals, watching rugby and drinking beer. Oh, definitely European right there. What's your friend's real name? Did he see something? He doesn't reply, gesturing no with his cigarette. Under the gray sky, snow continues to pile on the neighboring window sills. Also, authority. Highly specific. Is that what cops do? Cops, cops don't work on Sundays? No, cops do. Trust me. Someone I work Sunday. behind a curtain. Those windows have eyes, and those eyes are watching. Spying on you three. Hmm. My Nid name? My name is Martin Martinez. Ah! Lion Martin bastard. Martinez? Good local name. Let's go with that. Oh my god. No! <laughs> Why did I pick a dumbass? <laughs> oh, okay. No. We won't. He takes one last drag of a cigarette before stubbing it out on the showy balcony, snowy balcony, with a dying hiss. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really need to get going. Suggestion. Medium. Convince him to stay. <laughs> Look at you. This isn't the place or time for questions. Who knows who might be watching from the distance, hidden behind the curtains. Hey, listen. I'm just trying to make things okay again. Can we meet again somewhere else? For a moment, the man on the balcony seems almost vulnerable. Something moves in the depths of his feline eyes. Compassion and a hint of understanding. There's snow gathering on his hair and on his shoulders, a speckle of white against the purple that hangs loose on his slender frame. I am sorry, but I really don't have the information you're looking for. His voice is soft and deliberate. With the flick of his wrist, he sends the cigarette butt sailing over the rail. But, hold on, what's that? For a split second, his hand lingers as though gesturing towards a stone placed right next to the front door. It's a sign. Good luck with the investigation. Flick. Hmm. He's gone. We should run after him. See where he went. No point in running. Tenements like these often have multiple exits. If he doesn't want to talk to us, then he'll know how to hide himself. So we just give up? You're right. He probably didn't have anything important to say anyway. Oh. 
I mean, there's so many things I want to say about this that I would just get too in depth and drag on the the show. But essentially, you, here where where we live, you could keep them here for an aspect of talking to them. But if they're not give, being forthcoming, you can let them go and then try to find ways to talk to them at a later date. Maybe follow them because you definitely tell that he can have it. Um, but we're gonna go. He could be a witness. Yeah. Him or his Sunday friend. Either way, we need to look into that muscular type who's asking about our case. Well, that's exactly what you want to stop because you don't want to put him at risk to lose your main, potentially your one witness. So what you want to do is you want to find out more about this muscular type to make him feel better if you catch that muscular type. Like, hey, well, you know, we have the muscular type potentially. Did you see that? He wanted to draw our attention to that stone right over there. He nods towards a small rock on a soggy patch of grass. If we find a way inside the building, we can ask around for his apartment. Great, let's do that. <coughs> and you were about to walk away. I was. Stone, like any other, lying in a whirl of sleet and mud. Maybe there's something under it. I ignore Turn it, it Just ignore it. There's a key beneath it, rusty from the dirt. Now granted... This must be for the front door. Pity he doesn't have the apartment number on it. This building has many apartments, and a man can be in any of them. How are we going to find the right one? What were you saying, though, before I catch you off with this? That's not the only way. You, you could have missed all of that. But you might have still been able to get into the building by a different path. This uh. just happened to be your curiosity that you're here. I pointed out the guy, and he actually sent us in two different directions. One, here's a key. Two, there's a muscular type. So that doesn't end the adventure if you don't get this there's other ways through but we got a hint here's a key i got you we'll just have to go in and see put the stone back put the candle back all right we're gonna we're gonna step away for a little bit and come back and then we'll go check because i want to see what's around the corner What is around the corner? What's in my pocket? Right in the dick, Kuno! Ships at apartments. Rue de Saint. Rue de Saint Gislain. What is this? What is that? Hey! Up here, Pico! Don't talk to you. Ah. Red once more. Uh -huh. A great it's torrent a rushing down Rue de Esperance. You wait and see. The girl stares the at the sailboat by the pier. Red with anything. Who are you? I'm Cindy the fucking skull. What else do you want to know? Date of birth, blood type, the last time I was tested for hep C. We just want to know your name, little lady. No need to get defensive. Don't use that tone with me. I am the law. Let's start with your blood type and go from there. Yep. Yeah, uh... When were you last tested? Just to answer some questions, okay? And here I was, trying to be polite. Just can't win with you pigs. Despite the sass, she puts the brush aside. She's grown frustrated with her work and welcomes the opportunity to challenge authority in other ways. You uh, keep looking off to the side. What are you looking at? What are you doing to that wall? Do you know anything about the recent murder? Catch you later, Cindy. Can't you tell? I'm painting a beautiful mural. An aerial graffitio visible from low orbit. I haven't really started it yet. I'm waiting for the right words. She studies the wall, suddenly pensive. So you don't know what to write. Why are you so committed to defacing the building? I have an opinion on this. Want to hear it? Ooh. This place is severely lacking in havoc. Not even the occasional trash can fire to break up the tedium. Jesus. I thought I'd mix it up, you know, 
summon the forces of crime and social chaos with a wall-sized invitation. Have you ever tried your hand at graffiti -o? When faced with a blank wall, most people write unimaginative stuff, like pigs go home and Mono is here. We rarely see pigs around here though. Just union cads. And my name's not Mona, so... She wants it to be something true and total. <laughs> yeah? I love public art. Don't mind us. Keep doing what you're doing. I'm gonna have to stop you. This is hooliganism. Actually, I don't have an opinion. I lied. Alright, let's go with one. Thanks. Really? I'm yeah. sure the inspiration Because she's being being now that I have an official RCM stamp of approval. She's being defensive and you wanna kinda of lighten her up and get her on our side so we can talk so we can maybe talk to her about uh the murder. You've lessened her desire to deface the building. <laughs> Good try. <laughs> By you being enthusiastic, she shut down. <laughs> yeah. I ain't no snitch, Pigstein. Go forth and forage in someone else's shit. No shortage of squealers in these parts. Actually, there is a shortage of people who talk to us in a normal, calm, <laughs> informative manner. <laughs> we weren't put on this earth to make your life pleasant, fucko. She nods disdainfully toward the woman performing maintenance on the boat docked next to the pier. Hatred? Disgust? It's difficult to tell which of the two is more present in her girlish features. The woman on the boat does not notice her staring. Is that Sigourney Weaver? It is. That is on her. Someone's got to keep an eye on her. Who is she? Probably the Wild Pines rep. We should talk to her. She's a professional negotiator, though. I have the feeling she will be very cooperative while telling us nothing. Uh huh. You're thinking? You take the I'm thinking, yeah. Ask her unexpected questions, you know? Do your thing. Don't be afraid to get a bit wacky. Throwing her off is our best bet. Good idea, piggies. Run along now. Fuck her shit up good. Impound that boat while you're at it. I'd like to watch her swim back to us on. Watch your back, ungulate. You've got eyes on you. So, hmm. first, that conversation. Yep. How, how, do, how do you like talking to a delinquent? I deal with it every day, so it's not that bad. In answer to your previous question, before you wander way too far, go ahead and read. Mm -hmm. Inside the frame of a motorcycle in repair and tools used to disassemble it. Disassemble it. So you clicked on something to the right of the character that was white. Mm -hmm. But it's clearly a thing. Almost like you can't quite interact with it. But what if you have a tool to help you fix that? That you have to equip into your hand. <laughs> Hmm. Maybe that one. It's blue. A blue so yes. coat. Pry bars will change inaccessible items to accessible items. Ooh, let's click see. on it. Left click so you can actually see what it says. This cla classic double-breasted coat suits everyone, including you. And if you ever find yourself battling winds at the helm of a ship, then the coat's heavyweight fabric has got your back even if moths have a, left a few holes in it. Plus one suggestion. Aye, Captain. Minus one half-light off a serial poise. What is half-life at? Four. Four. I... So I'd put it at three, but suggestion goes up to seven. What do we... Is this a jacket? It is a coat. Esprit de corps goes down, but suggestion goes up. Hmm. Yeah, fuck those guys. 
They made fun of me. Because I was drunk. I couldn't remember anything. We're going in the building first where we talk to old hag. Nanny McPhee. Our trajectory is wildly erratic. But okay, let's do it. Also, because you have the key to the building, you got inside. Otherwise, no key. Door goes click. Oh. Okay, well, let's go back out. If this, okay. This is the apartment. We'll, we'll come back later. We'll, we'll look through the apartment. Was it not apparent? No. Okay. <laughs> not, not to me. It, uh, it's a long building, and you're on the long side of it. I did not put two and two together. What I did was I just was like, oh, I'm looking at the decor and everything around, seeing this. I thought it was actually like a shop. I didn't know it was part of that. Sometimes in Europe, there are shops in the apartment building's first floor. That's why I always want to visit Europe, see how things are compared to America. See how shockingly drastic, how shockingly different they are than are here. Be careful. You might not come back. Yeah, I've also thought of that too. <laughs> Docking reserved for residents of Rue de saint Gislaine. I'm try. I'm Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Click away, click away, click away, click away. Just a heads up. Mm -hmm. This is a big dialogue possibility in terms of sheer volume. It's good, it's rich, but I'm just letting you know you can spend the next six hours here hypothetically. Probably not, no exaggeration, but just big conversation. There. Do that as you will. I will. Hit her in the head with a pry bar. A striking woman leans against the cabin top of her sailing boat, smiling as you approach. Her green raincoat glistens with droplets. A silk scarf is tied around her throat. Good afternoon, officers. I'm Joyce. She extends Joyce her hand in greeting. I represent the board of Wild Pines, the owners of the harbor. You gentlemen must be from the RCM. She steps closer and holds out her hand over the railing. Joyce L. What does the L stand for? What exactly is the RCM? I remember hearing it from somewhere. What gave us away? Shake her hand. Don't shake her hand. Yeah, definitely shake I'm her glad hand. Glad to see you here. Her grip is tight and cold. I was dispatched to handle a strike, not a lynching. Anything I can do to assist the RCM in this matter, I will gladly. That is good to hear, Madame. My colleague will take the lead on this interview. I should let you know that he is recovering from an unusual medical episode. Very unusual. But I can assure you of his ultimate impotency. How interesting. I wish you a swift recovery. In the meanwhile, you have my full cooperation. And the full cooperation of the Wild Pines group. Ooh. It's hard to get a read on her precise disposition. But she appears helpful. You're on a boat. Tell me about Wild Pines. What do you do? What can you tell me about the, this strike? What can you tell me about this flinching? Do you know something about these tattoos? Show her the photo. You seem rich. Can I have some money? Thank you. That's all for now. Definitely beg for money. For sure. What we do. I'm afraid I don't speak for Wild Pines as a whole. It's a giant undertaking. So, what do they do? Fair enough. Tell me something else. The Pines' core competency is logistics. Container shipping, freight, that sort of thing. See those airships there, blinking? Those are the shipping side of things. And that is the terminal. Another subdivision deals with energy, oil and gas exploration, offshore platforms. So, the entire fucking infrastructure, basically. Yeah. She enjoys talking about the company. It would not hurt to inquire more. How much money does Wild Pines have? Got it. Tell me something else. We're going to definitely go with got it. Tell me something else because the money doesn't matter. She nods. Okay. That's your call. Everything. Right up to, but not including, trade secrets. Wait. What if I want to hear about trade secrets? What is your role in this precisely? I have other questions. First, you'd have to repeal the Emergencies Act of Trade and Elements. That gives me the right to silence. It's quite the octopus. An octopus? 
I will slay it. How do I repel it then? Repeal, not repel. Wouldn't want to disturb an octopus. Better let it be. Why? By throwing off half a century of foreign domination under the coalition. Unfortunately for you, the coalition also leases you the right to police West Revachol. Ooh, we have the same bosses, sort of. But I am derailing us. You wanted to know about the strike. I do. I believe the official title is Senior Labor Negotiator. In practice, I'm a grocery clerk. I relay the union's demands to Wild Pines and return with Wild Pines' counteroffer. And how are the talks going? They're not. That's the problem. The union stopped all negotiations a week ago, after that awful lynching took place. Now they won't even let me into the harbor. There's a 2 meter 20 racist behemoth blocking the gates. Oh, <laughs> you mean Measurehead? How were the talks going before the lynching? Let's say I was not making the kind of progress I'd hoped for when I first arrived. Hmm. And when did you first arrive? I arrived three weeks ago. Yes, in the middle of February. The bay was still partially frozen then. I prefer to do these things on site, like the RCM. But the strike began in December. Hmm. I wasn't the original negotiator here. I took over after Mr. Gaumont hit a wall with Mr. Clare, the union boss. Mr. Clare refused to speak with Gaumont despite concessions he'd granted the union in prior negotiations. This isn't the first time the union has gone on strike? Heavens no. There have been two prior strikes. Both times the union won significant concessions, including overtime pay and a medical plan. This time their demands are more... I guess you could say, aggressive. So they had to fight for overtime pay and a medical plan. Yep. I don't think we're talking to the good guys. I don't. Uh, I don't think so either. I mean, you got. You got to remember there had even for America there was a point in time that overtime and medical plans weren't a thing. You even early yeah, nineteen. Labor. Yeah. Yeah, I, I understand. I understand modern economy certainly, but just for it to have been expressed in this way that major 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 shipping port right one of many they, uh, they just they get no time off work till you die yeah it's we're striking what happened to this go mall what are their demands the scabs at the gate did you put them there talking about the union boss mr claire that's all i need here let's change the topic there are leaflets everywhere and banners what did they say again Oh, yes. Every worker, a member of the board. I like it. I don't know what to think about that. Over-aggressive commie posturing. Seems like they have no idea about business. Forget it. I wanted to ask about something else about the strike. Fortunately, they explained it. Every time the Wild Pines group makes a decision about anything... It needs the signature of each of the 2,200 workers in its Martinez terminal. Quite the filibuster. Just so you understand, this is but one of 22 terminals owned by Wild Pines. Essentially, not only are they kings of the company, they are also kings of the 72,000 employees of Wild Pines Group. That's pretty funny, I gotta admit. The workers can't be kings, the king is king. The king is dead. Long live the workers. What are you going to do? I'm not sure. Naturally, I assume that was just their opening position. A hard-nosed tactic with a side of mockery. But there's been no follow-up. Just the same nonsensical slogan repeated over and over again. And now, people are getting lynched, I hear. Behind the whirling in rags... A disastrous situation if there ever was one. Excuse me, from whom did you hear about this lynching? I first heard it from the boyer at the gates. The one whose very name advertises his aversion to work. I think he said it was, call me manana. This checks out. It, I, I wince every time. I understand that is completely your choice as the mm -hmm. person 
who wants to engage this experience. But you see all the flavor and you say, not interested. This is not, a, a real police officer wouldn't do that. And you're right. You're totally right. I am playing I, this in a way that a real police officer probably would do it. And well, how I that, would do it. it I'm, well, you said those are different things because you're trying to figure out this character and you're trying to do what you would do and you're wrestling both. So yeah. sometimes, to my surprise, you lean in and say, hey, wow, yeah, you want to do the interesting thing. Otherwise, got it, got it. On the job. Cool. Let's see what happened to this Gaumont. Mr. Claire told him to... How did he put it? Fuck off, midget. Gaumont is short of stature, you see. Hmm. Okay, then. <laughs> cool. Not cool. Oh, no, we're definitely going cool. Yes. Extremely. <laughs> Keep in mind, this is a negotiator Mr. Clare has worked with before, and who was more than fair with him and the Union. Sounds like usual aggressive posture. Scabs at the gates. Did you put him there? Scabs? You mean the huddled masses of Jamrock come to plead for work where the Union refuses to? Aha! If they were organized by Wild Pines or its affiliates, then it would be a company secret. I could not share it with you. Not right now, at least. Everard Clare is a man of the utmost integrity. If you can say one thing about him, it's that he always puts the interests of the workers first. Really? Of course not. Everard is fantastically corrupt. I imagine he has a thick, viscous goo where you and I have blood. Is he that bad? He can't be that bad. Say nothing. He is the most corrupt individual I have ever seen, and I deal with men like him for a living. If there is anyone more venal, more irredeemably nepotistic, then it's his twin brother, Edgar. Wait, there are two of him? Yes. Edgar looks exactly like his brother, except for that lazy eye. He also talks exactly like Everard does, and when one's term as foreman is up, the other takes over. Ha! Ah, unions. It's how they circumvent the term limits, you see, with a funny little switcheroo. While in office, they've embezzled God knows how much of their workers' dues. What about the union itself, uh, outside the Brothers Clare? Let's take... Let's take this back to the strike. I'm, I'm kind of curious on this. The Daybardes Union was once a perfectly normal institution. 20 years ago, anyway. It must not have been easy to establish under the Emergency Act. But they did it. I can respect that. Organized labor at its best, as they say. Then something happened in the local chapter elections. The Brothers Clare came and transformed it into a... How do you say? A mob. The Debardeurs are a crime syndicate. Sad as it may be, I suspect we'll be forced to cooperate with them. Refreshingly honest, officer. The company has tried appeasing in the past, but I'm afraid our concessions have only emboldened Everard and his brother. And your opinion, detective? If I may ask. I'm a curious and talkative person, you see. Would you say the Debardeurs union is... An effective advocate for the rights of local morking men. Giant leech sucking the life out of Revershell. Basically a socialist mob. I prefer not to have an opinion on these things. Indeed. Wow. Everyone. Sadly, while pirates <sighs> have cooperated with what amounts to a crime syndicate for two decades, however much you feed the leech, the leech always hungers. Chucks, I mean, the option to just not weigh in at all was right there at the bottom. Yeah, I just felt, even as no, a... No, the, 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 the opinions of the detective do not represent the official stance of the RCM. It, essentially, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Well, there fine. was a woman, the previous forewoman of the Union. She disappeared. Disappeared? Yes. On the last day of the local chapter elections, her daughter phoned in and said she wasn't running anymore, <clears throat> or coming to work, ever. End of story. Eerie. It happens. Some kind of extortion, probably? Indeed. The company suspects foul play, but there's nothing they could do. It was a union matter. The point of the presentation is, these kinds of things happen around the Clares. Watch out when you're dealing with him. Thank you for your concern, ma'am. 
will be just fine. Of course. How else can I help? That's the man who was killed. I'm afraid this is a discussion for once we've cleared the lynching question. So you know something about the tattoos. Fine, let's return to it later. Why? How is you looking at the photo titled lynching? Better not tie the force day to the bat's day on this. I hope there is something else I can help you with. She wants to answer the question. Protocol keeps her from it. Hey, thank you, Empathy. Quite a few things, I'm afraid. The information I'm to share with you includes sensitive trade secrets. For the sake of my employer, I have to ask for your names and badge numbers. Secret course, task. Man. We should have introduced ourselves. I am Lieutenant Kitsuragi from Precinct 57. And this is my colleague from Precinct 41. I'm afraid he doesn't have his badge at the moment. I hope mine will suffice. How curious. Why is that, <coughs> Detective? Awkwardness washes over the conversation. The woman doesn't like this turn of events. You remember when a partner told you I'd recently suffered from an unusual medical episode? My lost badge is related to it. I see. So, are you saying you lost your badge during the course of this episode? It's possible. After a night of heavy drinking, I lost all memory of my life and the world. I could have eaten it for all I know. I don't remember anything. This world, the city, nothing. Oh. Uh, yes. I can't hear you, darling. <laughs> Speak up, please. <laughs> you have to say one of the two. You can't escape. Some kind of encephalopathic amnesia. I don't even know how to respond. I do believe you, naive as that may sound. I simply can't imagine what you gain by faking such a condition. As I said, ma'am, his technique may be very unconventional, but he is an officer of the RCM. Of course, I sympathize, but I'm afraid I simply can't share anything more until I've seen that badge. Hang on. She's a professional negotiator. She should be open to some sort of mutually beneficial arrangement. What kind of arrangement would it be? Suggestion, medium 11. How do I negotiate my way out of this? That I'll find it somehow. Let's talk about something else until I do. That's the highest I've seen that. <laughs> She's a negotiator. Just float a favor at her. Insinuate. Surely there's some other way to demonstrate our law enforcement credentials? I will be frank with you. If I'm going to break protocol, I need to be able to justify it to my superiors. They're going to want to see something very tangible. You're in, but expect her to drive a hard bargain. Like what? from inside Terminal B suggests it's a hub for the local drug trade. This is an open secret in Martinez. The Union controls the terminal, so it goes to reason. They're profiting from this trade. The company has tried looking into this matter before, to no avail. Perhaps someone with your authority and resources might turn over the right stones. Or you can recover your badge. Though if I may be blunt with you, it sounds like that may be a lost cause. A hey. Detective, a word in private before we continue. Excuse us for a moment, madam. Ooh. Well, before you, before you click on Kim, what do you think so far? Intriguing. I am quite curious on what's going to happen and what she knows and what she may bribe us to do. You think she's being truthful? Somewhat. 50-50. Okay. I don't think she's 100% truthful or 100% lying either. So it's that toss-up right now of what she wants to tell us that is true and what little she can sprinkle in is lies. Shape our opinion a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. That union's a mob terrorist organization, man. They're all crooks and criminals. Well, maybe if you give him paid time off. No! Do you want to talk to Kim? We'll go right back to her. We're going to need to talk to Kim. How did you hope it would go? Honestly, I was expecting you to use your unorthodox technique to keep her off balance and, you know, not volunteer us to be her henchmen. 
<laughs> Eat it, Chucks. Oh, so we're henchmen now? Really? I thought it was going so well. This woman is running circles around us. She might have known about your misplaced badge all along. Or she's simply an adept improviser. Either way, we've played straight into her hands. He doesn't let it show. But there is a limit to how much the consequences of your unprofessional behavior can cost the investigation. I am sorry for putting us in this situation. I'll, I'll handle it. What do you propose? That we don't investigate the drug trafficking? We could just, you know, find my badge. Let's get back to her then. I'm sure you will, detective. Oh, that would be fantastic, but do we have the time? The world is large and your badge is 8 by 6 centimeters. <laughs> <laughs> you could line. request a new one from your station, but that would literally take months. No, if there is reasonable suspicion, we must investigate. Otherwise, she could claim we are siding with the Union, or that we are on their take. We'd never hear the end of it. What I propose is, we ask her, then we investigate, briefly. But do not share the outcome of this investigation with her. We tell her it's done, and demand for her information on the lynching. Oh, okay, way to be tricksy. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I would. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? Tell me about this alleged Wait. drug trafficking. Yeah, you seem rich. Can I have some money? It's quite straightforward. Someone we'll get to that in a minute. Turn will be to smuggle raw ingredients from the Samaran Isola into Revachol with the Union's blessing. Wild Pines has suspected it for years. Ingredients for what, ma'am? Meth and dextroamphetamine, GBL and various synthetic psychedelics. Hmm. Honestly, it might be quicker to say what you can't make from the stuff. Let me get this straight. The materials come from Samara to Revachol through the terminal? And you want us to investigate? Yes. After they clear the terminal, we lose track. The actual production is taking place at various sites in and around Jamrock Quarter, north of here. Wild Pine seems to be well apprised of the local drug trade, man. Do you mean to say the Union also produces the product? Sells drugs, I mean? We're in logistics. It's our business to know. And no. As far as the company knows, the Union does not produce it. They transport the ingredients for a cut. Hey man, just yes, shipping. Yes, but you won't get anything out of Everard and the Dock Workers Union. Still, every chain has its weak link. What do you mean? Am I going to need bolt cutters for this? <laughs> the lorries. Someone needs to move the ingredients from the harbor into the city. Once they reach Jamrock, they're distributed to a network of local manufacturers well beyond our grasp. But in transit, they are vulnerable. Perhaps you've noticed that a number of lorries are tangled in a traffic jam at the roundabout just now. Interview the drivers who are still hanging about. One of them might be waiting for a crucial shipment. Gives you a knowing look. I'll be explicit. If you find this driver, I will share company secrets with you. Huh. You'll be Net cost offset. In a way. But one step ahead of the Union in another. Why didn't you come to the RCM earlier? It's no coincidence the lorries are stranded there like, <laughs> like that, is it? What proof do you have that the Union is involved? Okay, I've made up my mind about the smuggling investigation. Actually, let's discuss something else for now. We did. On more than one occasion. Apparently, there's some sort of inter-precinct disagreement about whose jurisdiction this area falls under. Ooh. Aha! We talked about that. We know the company has launched its own probe into the Union's alleged involvement. We also know it's come up empty. It's not just the RCM. No one's been able to find any hard evidence. Well, here's your chance, officers. How do you think they're financing this strike? 
There are thousands of unpaid dock workers going strong for the fourth month straight. <laughs> there was a shakedown of local businesses preceding the strike. Many were squeezed to bankruptcy to fund it. With all due wow. respect to these desert <laughs> yeah. tie, the contents of a few cash registers cannot provide for 2,000 men. The local businesses can scarcely provide for themselves. So you think the strike is being funded with source ingredients for drugs? Precisely. Smuggled out of that very gate at night, most likely. Then loaded onto lorries and driven to Jamrock. You simply need to find one driver who will open up to you. It sounds like she tried looking into it herself. Though she's clearly not the type your typical lorry man would confide in. We have to embrace our inner racist chucks. We do. Yes? We will take this case, probe the drivers, and see what it yields. Except There's no way we can take this case. Refuse, we're taking it. Excellent. You don't have to. According no, to my reports, there are at least three lorry drivers lingering near the roundabout. Hopefully one of them will know something. And the reason I want to take it is because it helps me find out more potentially about the lynching. Potentially. Is this true? Well, sir, I think this is a good stopping point for the for this episode. Not yet. Not yet. It may come oh. to nothing. Not yet. Or well, it yeah. may just blow the case wide open. <gasps> I suspect the traffic jam won't disperse for a few more days. You should have the time you need. In the meantime, let me know if there's any other way I may be of assistance. Oh, yeah. Well, you don't have to do that. It's what you want to say, but it isn't that easy, is it? What? Well, why not? Look at that lady. Take a gander. Squint your eyes, bub. What nice fabrics. What lustrous hair. A well-kempt, yet tastefully short, bob of dark hair. Despite the first hints of grey, she's elected to keep it oh natural, shaped into a permanent wave. Late 40s style. While dull orange pearls hang from her earlobes, red from the cold. Her light green eyes scan you, full of knowledge and worry. Wealth and all its possibilities. You see how you miss out on a ton of quality writing if you just dodge the impulse of, No, I can't. Now look at you, you misery clad simian. Barely able to tie your own laces. Your armpits are lakes. A scythe of booze precedes you. Your hair sticks to your forehead and your underwear feels uncomfortable. You're poor. Poor as balls. You can't ask this person for money. You're too... Ashamed? I'm not ashamed. What is this feeling? I have never felt it before. I'm a goddamn working man and I'm not ashamed to shake this leech for some dough. As I should be, for even considering it. This is a woman, and I'm a man. Yes, I should make my own goddamn money by now. A lot of flavors. Maybe you could ask her for some stock tips. That's a maybe. Or a job. But you're sure as hell too ashamed to ask for cash, buddy. Oh, God. The lieutenant is here, too. Do not dishonor the force. <laughs> As I was saying, if there's any way I may be of assistance, please don't hesitate to ask. Why, yes, I am. So proud of you. You're, you're exhausting the dialogue menu. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people on boats, are there? Does she have a name? Do you have a license for that boat? I think I have a handle on the boat thing. The boat? No. It is called Cordelati 19, because that's the type of sloop it is. The word, it, feels strange. Such a beautiful boat deserves a proper name. A breeze ripples through the sails and tugs at your hair. Below, the sleek, fish-like shape of the hull parts the water. Beneath that, a resounding darkness. You're reminded cool. of something, oh, or someone. Cool, but your boat really needs a name. Okay, but what kind of boat is it? How do you like it? My sloop? I like it a lot. It's the eel's hips, baby. 
I'm enjoying this part of the interview. It has so little to do with the murder we're investigating. I really do, the lieutenant thinks. Is she thrown off yet? He's looking at the woman, assessing her. Of course there are. We're on an archipelago. How else are you supposed to get around? There is a pinch of defensiveness in her voice, but it is playful. Wait, we're on an archipelago? Look around. What do you mean, an archipelago? Yes, we are. We are on Le Caillou. Uh, Caillou? I thought we were in Revershall. So I haven't seen anyone else sail a boat around here. Understood. About this boat of yours. I haven't seen anyone else drive a souped-up Coupri Kenema motor carriage either. Actually... That motor carriage has been specially issued to serve as a patrol and pursuit vehicle. It's for crossing long distances in the Greater Ravachol Industrial Harbor. It's not a toy. It's an Why action figure! This? A toy, I mean. It's a machine for crossing long distances in the Bay of Ravachol, <coughs> between the city and the islands. She's having a good time arguing against the law. Too good, perhaps. Officer. I assure you, I'm a highly qualified pleasure craft operator. Qualified pleasure craft operator. So charming. Where's the damn license? I just license? renewed its safety inspection last month, Sorry. officers. It is completely <coughs> seaworthy. In fact, it's taken part in not one, but two insulindic regattas. Even finished once. What happened to the other time? Still need to see the license, ma'am. That's good enough for me. The other time, I would have finished the race were it not for an urgent work matter, much like the one I'm on now. Actually, you don't. I'm pretty sure I do. Police. I police? What do you mean? The Wayfarer Act specifically denies the RCM the authority to demand anyone's operator license. It's a little known fact among us law officials. Wait, exactly how little known is this fact? More like Anarchy Act, in my opinion. So we can't pull over random civilians and demand their papers? That's weak. Makes sense, I guess. I mean, look at me. Okay, forget the stupid Wayfarer Act. I had other questions. About the boat? Good. Mm. Mm. Nah, not for now. Not for of course, now. Detective. Yeah. Take what we want is this resolved thought right here. Yes. The white bubble, because it will tell us what the thought results. Lonesome, long way home. Here we go. Home awaits. Walk past Station 41 and through the market, past the Boogie Street spearhead to the other side of the lake, the frozen eye at the center of the district. Then past the video rental store on the corner. There at the end of a street lined with pine trees. A small house, no larger than a matchbox. 11 Voyager Road. You no longer live there. Those times are gone. And so are those people. Why did you come here? Why are you still here? And where's the dealer? You have to get back to work. That's all you have now. Grim! Learning capital perception raised to five, and if you use speed, you will boost your psyche. Isn't that nice? Additional benefits for the drugs you take. Huh. That is nice. But this is where we're going to pause off for the time being to complicate getting some speed. Indubitably. Well, guys, for grabbing the game, I'm Nutchucks. And we're out beating Cuba. Next time, guys, I'll see you later.